Hi everyone. I would first like to start out my speech by asking you guys a question. So how many of you guys know someone or if you have had someone um, get a concussion while playing a sport? If we were in person today, I have a feeling that there would be a few hands raised. Um, I ask this because this is what I'm going to be covering today is talking about like concussions in different sports, which sports they're most likely to happen happen in um and what happens what a concussion is what happens when you get one in the aftermath of getting one like what happens from here on out to you like how it affects how it affects you so a concussion is simply simply a brain injury by a severe blow to the head so whether that be like a sport and a ball or like you colliding with someone else or you just like banging your head really hard or like from a car accident stuff like that um so According to CDC estimates from the 2017 Youth Risk Behavior Survey, they found that 15.1% of students reported having a concussion, and then 6.2% reported having two concussions. And these are just the students that actually reported their concussions. So I had a concussion in high school and from my experience, I did not want to tell. I know I did not want to tell them I had a concussion or that anything was wrong because, and a lot of other students, as a matter of fact, did not want to tell that they had a concussion because that would result in, you know, them missing their game or them, like, being out for the rest of the season because in my case, I was out for, like, the last half of the entire sophomore year. So I know that a lot of people are not willing to risk that, but looking back now, it's something that, like, is totally stupid. You know, you should take that time for your brain to to definitely rest. So brain injuries cause more deaths than any other sport injuries, which I think is so crazy considering how many like injuries, you know, like ACL and just anything like that that can happen like so much more you think is so much more likely to happen than a brain injury, but that's not the case. So the three sports that a concussion are most likely to happen in is football, soccer, and basketball. So I first want to start out with football because I feel like that's the one that, you know, everyone probably like you know, that's kind of a given. Everyone knows that concussions happen a lot in football. So, in football, brain injuries account for um, 65 to 95% of all fatalities, which I think those numbers are extremely high. And I think that's kind of crazy, like I said, considering all the other injuries that, you know, players are getting throughout the season. So, um, football injuries associated with the brain occur at a rate of one per five and a half games. So, every five and a half games, someone is getting a concussion. And I feel like that's kind of like a bad rate because every five and a half games, like someone's getting a concussion, they can't even make it through like a whole entire, you know, like a whole season. Um, the main reason for fo concussions in football is I think we all know like um, you guys are literally banging your heads against each other. So definitely like jostling with like going direct like helmet to helmet. And um, the hitting head on with helmets causes like the jarring of the head that causes the neck to like whip back and then that causes your brain to touch your skull and then that's exactly how a concussion happens. So um, I will include a picture at the bottom of what your brain looks like when it's going like before a concussion and then after a concussion and like what it looks like while one is happening. Um, so next I would like to touch on soccer. So soccer is the sport that I played when I got my concussion. So I wasn't necessarily like banging my head into someone else, like direct contact, but I hit my head on the ground. And so a hard fall can definitely come from, or be part of, be a result of a concussion. Um, in the past, it's been said that soccer like is not traditionally like a sport that can really give you like a common sport that gets concussions, but recent studies have been showing that that is definitely not the case, and the cases are absolutely, like, rising. As many as 22% of soccer players, all injuries are concu concussions. So, I feel like 22 is, like, not a high number, but 22% of, like, like injuries are all concussions. Not even, like, you know, some are, you know, other things. Like, 22% are only concussions. Um, but the main reason for concussion, concussion in soccer is, again, the direct contact, but this time you don't have a helmet on, so you're literally just, like you could collide with someone literally like head on um like what happened to me was like falling and hitting your head on the ground or um 
getting hit in the head with a soccer ball, which I know from experience can be, that sucks, that hurts really bad, so that's also one of the really common ways that happens, like, in soccer, so, um, Next, I'm going to be talking about basketball, and I, when doing my research, when, like, picking three sports, I did not expect basketball to be, like, as high as it was. I definitely thought, you know, like, um, like, baseball, because you guys are little, like, people are throwing balls, like, at each other's heads, so I didn't really, I didn't think that basketball was one of the most common, but, um, concussions in basketball can count for more than 9% of, um, athletes that from ages 8 to 19. And then the NBA's official reports actually stated that there was 189 concussions in 153 people. So that was like, the average is about 10 concussions a season. So obviously common reasons for basketball concussions are, you know, falling, getting hit in the head with basketball, basically the same as soccer, you know. Um, but a direct blow to the head um, with someone else's head or just the ball. So and then I really want to touch on the aftermath of a concussion because I think this is like what's most important of like the whole entire process of someone having a concussion is like how you take care of yourself afterwards, like the aftermath. Um, so when I had mine, I like went to my school trainer and they're like, you know, like limit your screen time and treatment um, of a concussion consists of basically just like rest and taking pain medication. Um, try to limit your time like on the screens it'll definitely help your brain heal I know it sounds stupid and we all are so tempted to like look at our phones but um, that's really important Um, and then in conclusion you cannot prevent a concussion but there are some things that you can do to make sure that you're protected and make the odds a lot lower so wearing the appropriate gear and um, you know making sure that you're properly equipped with things that actually fit you um, And then just be sure to look out for any symptoms if you're unsure, if you can't stay conscious for more than 30 seconds, or you have, you know, a lot of vomiting, or you have a constant headache that's, like, continuing to get worse. Concussions and sports are not going to go away because, obviously, people, sports, you know, it not going to go away, obviously. Um, But the best we can do is just try to understand how everything happens and try to play the sports we love with caution. So, in conclusion, I wanted you guys to really be informed on getting the facts of getting a concussion and how it can affect your daily life because it really can take a toll on you. Thank you for watching!